Hello everyone, this is Hannah and today I have amazing news for you. A second Polyphemus moth emerged today. It is June 14th and it is three weeks after the first Polyphemus moth hatched that the second one emerged. I am so excited and I was hoping the second emerge would be a male. Guess what? I was right. A male Polyphemus moth emerged from his cocoon. Okay everyone, so now I am showing you this beautiful male polyphemus moth that hatched while we went to a restaurant. And so we just got back and I was opening up the door, not to check on these cocoons, because I thought that it was going to take a while, much longer for them to hatch. And had no idea I would um, come to see a beautiful male polyphemus moth had emerged just while we were at the restaurant. And so... I opened the door. I was going to check on that intro caterpillar that I previously posted a video of about that striped grass looper. Um, and I was going to check on it, but as soon as I looked into the net, a really big surprise was in front of me. And so here's the cocoon that he hatched out of, the one right there at the bottom. You can see a spot of yellow stuff. That is his meconium. It's a yellowish brown color that he released when he was coming out the cocoon. There's his cocoon. It's still kind of wet because of the meconium. So you can tell he's a very freshly emerged moth. And now we only have one more cocoon that we are waiting for to hatch. And so I was hoping that the second hatch would be a male because three weeks ago our first female polyphemus moth hatched. And thankfully I got just what I was hoping for this beautiful male polyphemus moth that I hatched out. There he is. Isn't he so beautiful? So, um, he's not very active right now, and you can see his wings, it looks like he is very, very newly hatched, because you can look at his wings, he still has like a little dent right there on the hind wing, and then right there you can see at the tip of his hind wing, just right there you can see it's bent a little bit, so right there it's got a little place where the wings are kind of like wavy right there then right there is bent at the tip same on the other hind wing and so yeah and he's not active and his wings are still a little bit wobbly so maybe he needs to hang for some more time so before we pick him up again we're gonna put him back on the stick and let him hang there for a little while then I'll come back and show you a few more Okay, he's on the stick. Putting up to where he needs to be. Wow, that's just one beautiful insect right there. Seems like he's gonna climb to the very top of the stick. And it looks like that right there at the very top is where he's comfortable. And so we'll still let him hang there for a little while and give him some time to dry. Because I think that he's, I think he probably like just hatched while we were coming back home. For the fact that his wings are still a bit wrinkled. So since his wings are still a bit wrinkled, we'll let him hang here for a little while. And see if that changes because he might be very, very fresh. I mean, we actually know that he's very, very fresh because before we left home to go to the restaurant, there was not a male polyphemus moth hanging on the top of the net. So we're going to let him hang there for just a little while longer, and then I'm going to come back in not long to show you um, how he looks. Okay, everyone, so it's been a little while since last time I was interacting with the moth, and his wings were, were still wobbly. And so now I think he would actually be ready to be interacted with. And so it's been a while, and unfortunately, remember the wings, remember I was telling you the wings were still wrinkled and stuff? 
So unfortunately the wings are still like that. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, everyone. I wish he had just he just released so much power fuse. I mean he released so much recording all of his see that drop him on Kanye. And look at it all over my hands. He just like skewed it out a, b a whole bunch of it. And so you can see now he's more ready to fly. He's actually flapping his wings and stuff. Oh wow, he's crawling all over me. Oh, he's getting ready to fly. Oh wow, he's ready to fly. So we're going to put him inside the tent. Because I remember with the first few miles that she was not going to be able to fly. You know, he's preparing for the flight, so let it be inside the tent. Because last time with the female, when she did her first flight, I thought that she wasn't going to be able to fly, period. Even though they said that the females are just not able to fly very long distances. When she did her first flight, seeing at the end of the polyphemus mall video about the first polyphemus mall hatched, she actually flew like, at the end of the video, I want to show her flying on my hand, but in reality, she actually flew far and hit that window right there, and then see that TV right there, and then see the table that was on right there behind that table, that's where she flew and then so I had to get her from behind there very quick to avoid, from, to um, stop her from messing up her gorgeous wings. So yeah, and this male is probably going to be even more active than her since the males can fly further than the females, and right now he's vibrating and getting to fly. Sorry, the tower's not focusing. It's not a very good view because I don't have a light or anything. His legs feel so weird, just like owl butterflies. Like when we went to Cowboy Garden, the owl butterflies. And I'm not trying to complain about the owl butterflies, I still love them. But when they were on my hand, their legs just feel very ticklish feel kind of unusual and it's the exact same thing with this polyphemus moth is like holding an owl moth I mean an owl butterfly it's like, just like holding an owl butterfly the legs feel so weird oh, now he's getting ready to fly he is a real beauty you can tell that he's smaller than the female who hatched not long ago oh there he goes well, that was not much of a flight, really. He just flapped and fell to the ground. But you can always expect their first flight to be kind of clumsy because when they just hatched out and it's their first time flying, sometimes they don't get it right the first time. Now, it's not like that um, most of the time. It's not like that with butterflies. I mean, some butterflies is like that. Like, remember the pain legs I had? But with a lot of butterflies I have, when they fly, the first time they fly is really good. So, yeah, he's still not really, he just fell on the ground, maybe. He's getting ready to fly again, it looks like, oh, oh my gosh, he's crawling on my arm. Oh my gosh, that feels so weird. Let's see, he's trying to fly again, let's see, maybe this one will be more better. Like, when they're first at it, I mean, they know that they have wings when they first come out the cocoon. It's not like they don't know how they, they don't know that they have wings until they can fly. But... Sometimes they still have to practice with those wings after emerging. It's not like a baby bird that has to practice and practice and practice before it can finally fly. They only have very little practice to do before they can fly. Oh my gosh, she keeps crawling on my arms like he loves to crawl on my arms. So let's see, I think the second flight is going to be better than the first one. He just fell on like the female at first, when she was falling on the ground, when she tried to fly, I thought that she was always going to be like that. I thought that each fly, flight she was going to try to do was going to fall on the ground. But then she kept flying. She actually did pretty good. <laughs> okay. Why well, do you like to crawl on my arm? <laughs> He's so cute and his wings flapping. Okay, stay on my finger. <laughs> oh my gosh. His legs feel just... Very ticklish. <laughs> he always, like, each time he's on my hand, he always finds a way to crawl up to my arm. <laughs> oh, well, that one still was straight to the ground. But it's okay, he'll approve about it. I've seen that he isn't really very good at flying yet in the tent. I'm letting him crawl out on the bed a little bit. 
So for now, we can still handle him outside of the tent. But that's just for now. Pretty soon, that's going to change. Pretty soon, he's going to be flying around like crazy. And we're going to have to keep him in that tent. Because I've been tricked by moths two times. Um, with moths thinking that they can't fly like... First, I have I raised the giant level moth that I have played before, and my arms are feeling all tingly from him crawling all over me. See, look, he's even trying to fly right now. After when I raised the giant level moth caterpillar, and I think I already told you about this in another video. Oh, you just felt it before. That I raised the giant level moth caterpillar. I think I already told you about that in another video. Um, so like when the caterpillar turned into an adult giant leopard moth, they said that the females were very poor flyers because of their fat abdomens. You remember I told you that female moths need to, females and butterflies need to have more bigger abdomens than the males because they need to hold eggs in their body to reproduce and stuff. So, the same like I said, like that when moths like when the first female pop is not actually I told you that. So when the first giant leopard moth, when that giant leopard moth caterpillar emerged from her, I mean giant leopard moth emerged from her cocoon as an adult. I really thought it was a female because when it first emerged, it wasn't very active and when it tried to fly, just like this male polyphemus moth, it would just keep falling on the ground, but it wouldn't actually do like a real flight. And so I thought, oh, this one's definitely a female because if it was a male, it would be flying all along. But then I got convinced that it was actually a male. I mean, I never really knew if it was a male or a female, but later on... It did start vibrating, and it actually did a very good flight, and now he's finally calming down. So it did a very good flight, and started flying around. I was like, oh, wow, this thing is much better at flying than I thought, because the day that it emerged was one day before we were going to travel to Callaway Garden. And so I thought, oh, this moth will be easy to travel with since it doesn't fly around and move that much. But it that quickly changed, and so, yep, we had to go to Callaway Garden. And we spent the night in the hotel there. And the next day, the moth, for some reason, was dying because, I don't know, maybe because it was being transferred too much from place to place, wasting so much energy and stuff. Um, so I released that Calvary Garden. And I hope it did good there. So, yeah, it'll probably be, like, just like with that giant leopard moth. Same with this moth right here. Like, I'm not saying that just like with the giant leopard moth, he'll live a short life. I mean, I hate to say that he will live a short life. These moths don't live long just because they don't have a mouth. And so sorry the camera's not focusing very good on here. It's not a very clear view. But um it's with the flight skills is going to be the same because right now he's not flying and I can hold him outside the tent without having to worry about him flying all over the place and flying behind the T V and stuff. And sorry the tower's not focusing very good. There it goes. You can see his cute little fuzzy face and he's very fuzzy. And so, yeah, pretty soon he'll be flying around like crazy, and he'll have to be kept in that tent. And so, unfortunately, like, just with that female, we kept her for one day. It might be the same like that with that male. I want to release him in the park, and not at the grave site where we found him as a cocoon, even though that's the same place where we found him. So, everyone... Thank you for watching. I hope to release this beautiful male moth at Bryson Park tomorrow. So, see you in the next video. Bye bye.